Now, I really love this technique, not only because it's fun to create, but also because it's just a great subtle detail that you can keep in the background and have some constant movement on your map. By the way, I'm gonna have some animation presets as well as this project file available over on my Patreon page, link in the video description. So I'm using GeoLayers here. You don't have to use GeoLayers to do this technique. You can do it on any particular map, but I'm gonna jump in here and create a map comp, and then I'm gonna go with the Bing Aerial default satellite imagery. Now this water texture is gonna live on a solid layer. So I'm gonna go to layer and select new solid. I'll call this water animation and you can go ahead and click make comp size. But I've noticed that sometimes when you apply effects to solid layers and you have the solid layer the same size as your comp, you can see things on the edges. It just doesn't look good sometimes. So I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. We'll do 4000 by 2200. Color really doesn't matter. Now to make this texture, I'm gonna be using an effect called fractal noise. You've probably heard of it. If not, you go to window and select the effects and presets panel and you'll find it under the noise and grain section. Just grab it here and drop it directly on your new solid layer. It's gonna give you this weird texture that's like grayscale, different values between white and black. And there are a ton of different parameters that you can customize here. I'm not gonna dive really deep on all these parameters. I'm gonna show you how you can quickly get this water look, but then I leave it to you to dive in and, no pun intended, and tweak the parameters to your heart's content to really get whatever kind of look you're going for. The first thing I wanna do, however, is just bring this to life. Cause if I scrub over the timeline here, there's nothing going on. So I can quickly bring this to life by animating the evolution. So I'm gonna bring my playhead to the beginning and just add a keyframe here. Um, I'm gonna use keyframes just because if there's people here that are newbies, keyframes are a little bit easier. You can, however, just slap an expression on here like time times 500 or 150 and it will automatically, you know, just get it animating. But we'll use keyframes for right now. So I've got the evolution. I'm gonna go all the way to the end of 10 seconds and I'm gonna have it rotate 10 times. There we go. Now let's take a look at what this is doing. If your computer's struggling to play this back, go to window and then bring up the preview panel and you can change the skip and the resolution and bring these down to try to get you know, some nice playback here. Now we need one more effect. So go back to effects and presets panel, go to blur and sharpen, and then go grab this CC vector blur, and then drop that on your water animation solid, and then go to the amount of vector blur and add something like 25. And now right away, this is gonna look like, almost like you're in, when you're in a pool and you're, you're looking straight down at the bottom of the pool and you have direct sunlight. It's kind of giving you those kind of vibes. Also, take quick note that our frame render time down here per second shot way up. This is just gonna take a lot longer to render, mainly because of this vector blur, but you know, things that look good take time, so just be ready to wait. Okay, now I have the water texture layer, but how do I get this to only show up where the ocean is and not where the land is? Well, I can do that by creating a mat. So I'm gonna go over here to the GeoLayers panel, and you know what, I'm gonna zoom in by another level here. And I'm gonna go click on this plus icon, add features to browser, download features, and then just go ahead and grab land natural earth global data set. That's gonna add it here. It's a feature collection. I'm just gonna grab the whole feature. And essentially what I'm gonna do is draw this out as one shape layer that I'll use as a mat. So under my layer styles here, I need to grab a solid layer. And I also need to turn off all these settings here. I don't want auto stroke width. I definitely don't want individual layers. I want it to be one layer and I don't want it to draw inside the map comp. I also want to simplify the geometry at current zoom. That's perfectly fine. Now, when I go to draw this out, it's gonna give me a quick warning saying, hey, homeboy, you're about to draw 50,000 vertices. It might take a while and slow down After Effects. We're not worried about that because to make things look good, it takes time. Okay, indeed, that took a little bit of time. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this layer land. You can call it matte or whatever you want. Now to actually matte this out, you need to uh, toggle the switches here if you can't see this column. Oop, I'm starting to you know, bog the system down here. So now I have this track matte column and what I wanna do is grab the water animation. Let's just turn it back on so that we can see it again. So now I'm gonna grab this water animation solid and uh, for the track mat pick whip and attach it to the land so that it's using the land as the mat and it will automatically turn off the visibility of that land but now it's showing it only in land so to change that we simply invert the map right here because it's using it as an alpha mat 
we can invert that. You might be asking, why didn't you just download the Ocean data set? Well, I noticed there's some issues with that data set, like Australia, like water was covering certain areas, so I just went ahead and grabbed land. Now we have this, which looks absolutely horrible. Now it's a matter of finessing the blend and the color to make sure that this blends in with the map comp. Now we already have the existing, if I turn off the water texture, we already have this existing blue that there's actually uh, bathymetry in there as well. Wow, this is really bogging my system down. You can see the bathymetry here, so I want some of that to still show through. So for the water animation texture, I'm gonna go to the blend mode and we're gonna switch this to one of these right here. Let's go to overlay and see what that, look, that looks like. And now you can zoom in, and this is really a matter of you know tweaking this in to get what you want. So you can switch it over to soft light. Wow, this is really like making my system bog down. Let's switch the resolution of the comp here down to like half maybe. If you wanna quickly jump between blend modes, hold the shift key and then hit plus and minus. Soft light just makes it pop a little bit more. You can see here's overlay and then soft light really makes those highlights pop out. All right, very cool. Definitely looks great for a first go around. Now I wanna attach this to the map and actually start to fly the map around with this water. So to do that, I'm gonna jump back to the parent and link and just grab the water animation and we will attach it right here and go ahead and set it to 3D as well. And now if I add a keyframe here, I'll bring these back to the beginning and then we'll zoom in here. And I'm gonna change the pitch and the bearing quite a bit and zoom in quite a bit just so you can see that this, you know, this you can still make this look good in 3D and you can zoom in on it and with different effects, it'll look just fine. You know what, this is frankly still a little too prominent. I wanna make it even more subtle. So I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna switch the blend mode to overlay and I'll also hit T for opacity and I'll bring the opacity down to 60% and that'll just make it hide a little bit better. Also, I can make this animation that loop seamlessly. So I have a 10 second clip here and if I hit U for the keyframes on my water texture animation, you'll see that this keyframe goes right to the end of 10 seconds and this is a animation of the evolution, which does five cycles. So if you go down to evolution options in the fractal noise effect, you'll see there's a little checkbox called cycle evolution. And this is where I can essentially tell how many cycles it's gonna do, and then at the end of that, it will basically seamlessly loop. I'm gonna switch this to five, since we have it keyframed to five. Now at the end of this 10 seconds, when it restarts, it will seamlessly loop. Now let's have a look at this. And you know what, maybe now this is too subtle. I really can't stress enough how many different parameters you can tweak to change the look of your water texture. So if we come back here, let's just solo the water texture uh, layer and I'm going to turn off all this stuff. So I just wanna see the texture. And for example, if I come over here to the fractal noise settings and go to transformation, I can just scale this down to 25 and that's gonna give us a completely different look. Now, you'll notice that my system has become really bogged down and it's almost, you know, I wouldn't want to work like this. So there's a couple of different tweaks and things you can change to make this a bit smoother. The first thing I would do is I would render out this as a video file. That way you just have a video clip that's looping and then you can slap this in and apply it to your mat. Um, that's obviously going to take away your fractal noise customization options, but I suggest you create different water textures first and then you render them out as video clips so you have like a little library of water textures that you're happy with and you're not customizing them every time. Um, another thing that you can do, and pretty much the main thing that's bogging my project down is this land shape layer. This thing has over 50,000 vertices, which is just insane. So what I could do is export this out as a PNG or basically rasterize it. So export it out as a PNG or whatever I want and then re-import it and then change that layer to use it as the mat. You can encounter some problems there if you're starting to do really a large scale like zooming in on your map after that but if you're not doing a whole lot of moves this can be a really really great option and of course another thing that'll speed up your workflow is to create these animation presets so you have these effects on your water animation layer so what you can do is just grab both of them and go to animation save animation preset and that's going to allow you to save out these ffx files so in addition to so you could do that workflow if you just want to generate textures that are customizable or um, you can do the option where you render out the video files. So then you, th that's more of like burned in, you can't customize them. So, you know, pick your workflow. 
Okay, so there you have it. Uh, once again, I'm gonna leave all the downloads over on my Patreon page. There's a link in the video description. I'm gonna throw in some of those FFX animation preset files. I'll throw in some of the rendered out video clips of the textures, and I will also throw in the After Effects project file. So go check that out. Also, uh, if you don't know, I have a GeoLayers 3 masterclass where I do a really deep dive, a comprehensive look at how to use GeoLayers 3 to create maps. I'll leave a link to that in the video description as well. And uh, yeah, that's enough of the sales pitch. See you next time.